Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Triumph Kids Live! I'm so excited that we get to worship today with our families. And we have an awesome day filled for you. But first, we're going to hit it off with the song, Are You Ready to Worship Jesus? If you are, can I get a big hallelujah? And let's go! start out with prayer. Lord, thank you for this day and all your many blessings. Thank you for bringing us together to love and to serve and to worship you. We thank you for keeping us safe and we pray that you bring us all together again soon. In Jesus' name, amen. It's Resurrection Weekend and I'm here to tell you a story with the Resurrection Eggs. And I want to tell you, first of all, our first egg is a blue egg. And our egg here has a donkey in it. Can you see that little donkey? He's tiny. Well, the donkey that Jesus rode into the city, he was a tiny donkey too. 
He was a new donkey. Nobody had ever ridden him before. Hey, do you remember the Houston Rodeo and seeing any of those kids riding those little sheep and how they bucked them around everywhere? Well, that's how it would be if you or I tried to get on a donkey that had never been ridden before. But not Jesus. He can do all things. Well, Jesus was going through the city and the crowd ahead was excited. They proclaimed him to be their king. The crowds, they went ahead and they followed behind and they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we sing a song in our Sunday school class and I'm gonna sing it for you right now. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, he is the King. Hey, number two, what are you fixing here? Well, Jesus had some friends. They were his disciples, and there were 12 of them. Do you remember that story? Well, inside this egg, we have three coins, three three coins, 30 pieces of silver. Well, there was one disciple. Things weren't going just like he wanted it to go. His name was Judas. And Judas, he decided, well, I'm gonna go see what the priests have to say about this and see how much they're gonna give me if I tell them where Jesus is. So he went there and they decided they would give him 30 pieces of silver if they would, if Judas would tell them where Jesus was. 30 pieces of silver. Poor Judas. He did not realize what he was doing. Well, Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room. And now we get to number three. Number three egg has a little cup in it. Well, we do this thing called communion at this time of the year. Well, that's because Jesus did it with his disciples. He took the, the last meal with his disciples and he told them to do this in remembrance of me. So he took the bread and he took the cup and he took the bread and he blessed it. He held it up to heaven and he blessed the bread. And then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples to eat. And they ate of it and he said, when you do this, this is my body given to you. And he said, and drink this cup. It is remembrance of me. Do it for this cup is the New Testament for which is shed for many and the remission of sins. Blood, sin, hmm. There's a puzzle here. Let's put it together. Oh my goodness. Now we get to number four. Number four. And they went a little farther. Jesus was going to go pray. Oh, look, here it is. He went to go pray. He went to go pray. Because he knew what was about to happen was gonna be very hard. So he went and he went to go pray. And he took his disciples with him into the garden. And they all went to go pray. And Jesus said, you stay here. I'm gonna go a little bit further. And he went a little further. And he fell on his face and he prayed, Oh, Father, Father, please, please, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thou will be done. Hey, TKL, this is Brother Anthony. I hope you're doing well uh, during this time of being at home. Uh, Isaiah and I have a little object lesson for y'all for this Easter, for this Easter Sunday, since uh, uh, this weekend is Easter. Uh, when we were born into this world, we were clear. We were clean of sin. You can see through this glass of water. You can see straight through it. It's nice and clean. As we get older, we begin to have sin in our life. We may not be honest with someone. We might disobey our parents. We might be mean to somebody. And there's a lot of other things that uh, we may do that are uh, not pleasing to God. And so our life becomes like this. That clear glass of water turned dark because we let sin in our life. 
and it becomes to take effect. As you can see, the water's blue. You can't see through it. It looks nasty and it looks dirty. So when we want to be clear, when we want to get back to our original state, we start to ask God for forgiveness. We start to repenting from our sins that we may have done. And as we start talking to God and we start praying and we start asking for forgiveness, God begins to come into our life. And he begins to wash away our sins. The water that was blue starts to clear up. It starts to go back to its original state because we allow God to take the wrong that we've done and to change it for good. And this is where repentance and being baptized in his name comes from. So when we go to God and we ask for forgiveness and we ask him to wash away our sins by being baptized in his name, he does this to our life and it becomes clear. And that's protection over it. And no matter how many drops, no matter what sin comes into our life, he's able to wash it away. He's able to clear it up. It may stay there for a little bit and it may affect us a little bit, but we have to keep going back to God. We have to keep going back to Jesus asking, forgive me, forgive me. And our sins become washed away. I hope this object lesson has blessed you. I hope you have a great Easter. We love you and we miss you and we can't wait to see y'all. Now we're on number five. Five. Wanted to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas, a person who had done lots of bad things. He released them to the crowd. Well, in this little egg, we have this little whip. Well, I happen to have a bigger whip than this today. They took Jesus and they beat him with a cat of nine tails. They beat him severely, so severely, blood came forth and pieces of flesh was ripped off his back by his stripes. He took those stripes for you to heal your body. Those stripes he took for you to heal you. He handed Jesus over to be crucified. And they beat him severely. Number six. What's in this little egg? Hmm. Oh no. You can't see it very well. But it's a crown of thorns. A crown of thorns. A crown? Well, Jesus is the real king. He is the king of kings. But they mocked him. And on him, they put a crown of thorns. The soldiers, the governors, took Jesus to the common hall. They gathered together a whole band of soldiers. They stripped him of his beautiful clothing and put on him a scarlet robe. And they braided a crown of thorns. Thorns! They put the thorns on his head and they pushed it down. They gouged into his forehead and drops of blood came down. They mocked him saying, hell, hell, king of the Jews, king of the Jews. Poor Jesus, he did nothing wrong to deserve this. Now, number seven. Wow, this one's not making much noise. Hmm. Oh, look, it's a cross. A cross made out of three nails. Three nails. Three nails? Wow. Three nails. Well, do you know they put nails in his hands and his feet? They put nails probably bigger than this one. And they drove him into his arms and held him to the cross, the cross of Calvary for you and me. They led him away to be crucified. They took his hands and his feet and they nailed him to the cross. They took a big hammer, boom, boom. Oh my goodness, it had to have been painful. Just a short time before, Mary had anointed his feet with oil. The sweet perfume had filled the room and now nails were going through his feet. 
and blood went forth. And the soldier, I'm sure he could smell the sweet perfume that was still lingering from a Mary anointing his feet. And now we get to number eight. Number eight. What is in here? A dice? What is that for? We roll dice to play games. We play games with dice, don't we? Oh my goodness. Why would they be playing a game in the middle of this crucifixion? They rolled and played a game. The soldiers did for his robe. They wanted his robe, but they didn't want to rip it apart. Somebody wanted it for themselves, the whole thing. And this is so it might be fulfilled what the prophet said. He said, they parted my garments among them and upon my vesture, that's his clothing, they did cast lots. They played games to get his clothing. Now we get to number nine. Well, he was on the cross now. He was there to die for you and me, for our sins. And a soldier came up. He had not known. Or maybe he did know. I don't know. But Jesus had cried with a loud voice, and he had said, Father, into, my, into thy hands I command my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. His spirit left his body. He had already given it up. Well, the soldier, he had a spear in his hand, and he went up to Jesus, and, and they didn't break not one bone, not one bone in his body. And they took a spear and they pierced his side. And out of his side came forth water and blood. Blood. This blood's for you. Water. Hmm. There's a scripture that says in John, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, him shall never thirst again. The water that I give him, he's never going to thirst again. That water. The water and the blood. They all mean something very deeply. The water was a water springing up into everlasting life. Everlasting life. Let's say that again. But so whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Everlasting life. Water that I give you is going to spring up in you. I think he's talking about the Holy Ghost there. Number 10. Well, Joseph was one of his good friends, Jesus' friend. And that day, when you died, they would take a cloth. It was bigger than this cloth. It's probably about the size of a bed sheet. And Joseph asked for the body of Jesus, and he, he asked for it, and they gave it to him. And he wrapped his body in a white linen cloth. And Joseph had already prepared himself a burial place for when he got older and, and, and died, but he didn't need it yet, so he gave it to Jesus. He gave it to Jesus, and, and in Joseph's tomb, Jesus was laid. He, he was laid in another man's tomb. The tomb was made out of rock. It was like a big cave, and they wrapped him in this clothing just kind of like when he was born and they wrapped him in swaddling clothing. Well, now they're wrapping him in clothing again. A very special cloth, a burial cloth. And they put him in the tomb and they shut the door. Now 
Now we have number 11. Oh, they shut the door all right. They put a great big stone in front of the door. It was huge. It, I don't know how they got it in front of the door because it, once it was there, there was no getting it away from the door. It was there and it was set and there was nobody moving it. But do you know those people still thought somebody's gonna steal his body and then these people are gonna start believing about Jesus all over again. Well, Pilate told them, take a guard, go. Make sure the tomb is as secure as you can be. make it. Shut that door and they shut the door and they put a seal on it, a seal showing that nobody had gone in or out. And they put soldiers there standing guard. Soldiers stood guard by the tomb to make sure his disciples didn't come and steal him. Well, you know what? Three days passed, three days. And let me tell you what happens in number 12. I'll be right back. Hi, boys and girls, I'm back. Now we're on number 12. It's been three days, three days later. Three days later. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, that would be Monday for us, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the other Mary, came to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone rolled it away and he sat upon the stone he was sitting up there he sat up there and the angel's countenance was like lightning and his raiment that's his clothing was as white as snow oh my goodness could you imagine if you saw that yourself what would you do well the guards that were guarding the tomb, they were so scared. They, they shook and they became as dead men. I think they might have fainted. Well, they became as dead men. And the angel answered to Mary, the women, and he said unto them, Fear not, don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, which was crucified. Oh, guess what? He said, he is not here. He's not here. For he is risen just as he said he would. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And they went quickly and told his disciples that he had risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall you see him. That's what happened. And he went to Galilee before them. Then thereafter, he told them to tarry in the upper room until you get power from up high. Yes, he did. That power is the same power that gives us strength every day, you and me. It's the Holy Ghost power. The scripture says, the wind bloweth, and you hear the sound thereof. So is everyone that is born again. There is a sound. Talk to you soon. Bye now. Don't you just love the resurrection eggs? They are one of our favorite ways to tell the story of Jesus. Do you know that there was a prophet in the Old Testament named Isaiah? He told of Jesus' coming hundreds of years before Jesus was born. Isaiah was a prophet. That means he spoke for God. But also, he foretold the future. Here's some passages from what he wrote. 
Uh, parents, you may this may sound a little different because this is the international children's version. He was hated, and we didn't even notice him. But he took our suffering on him and felt our pain for us. We saw his suffering. We thought God was punishing him. But he was wounded for the wrong things we did. He was crushed for the evil things we did. The punishment which made us well was given to him. And we are healed because of his wounds. Kids, do you know who that was talking about? That's right, it's Jesus. How about you help me right now just thank Jesus for what he did for us and how his blood saved us and will let us get redemption and be with him in heaven one day. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We're just so thankful that you came to this world and that you gave yourself for us. And we're just, we look forward to that day when we can be in heaven with you. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together, come on.
your triumphant kids. Brother Daniel Gums here, AKA, you know, the Goofy Gums. Listen, Sister and Brother Gums, we are excited to bless you. Now, she's not here with me right now. She will be soon. But nevertheless, we wanted to send out our love, send out our thoughts, send out our prayers. Just so you know, Brother and Sister Gums, we think about you. We love you. And we can't wait till next week. We're going to come and bring some more activity for you. And we're going to do some stuff online together. It's going to be a blast in Jesus' name. God bless. Oh, 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 oh,